Hi everyone and welcome to a quick Mighty Ginkgo tutorial. My name is Zero and I'll be your instructor for this lesson. Now I know I said that I was going to do a class, a full class on the tonic body and discord. However, my schedule just suddenly changed and I don't have the time to go through a full class like I would like to do. However, I feel like I'll be jipping you guys by not giving you the, the tutorial, I promise. So I'm going to do this short video and you know, when I say short, it's going to be like 30 minutes or so <laughs> um, on how to rig um, clothes for the tonic body. Now everything you need is going to be down in the description and I'm going to show you how to do it. If you need a tutorial showing you how to make the clothes and stuff that I use in this, you can just watch any of the other tutorials that I have with Marvel's Designer. It's exactly the same um, process, just you're using the tonic body instead of using like a, a default one or a tray or whatever. The process is still the same. Just create your garment and then import it in. So um, I'm going to hurry up and get on with this project, I mean get on with this tutorial because like I said quick quick we have to go and I don't have time. So when you open up the dev clip, clip <laughs> when you open up the dev kit included you will see that it would look like this where it's just a skeleton and the UV matte box. Don't panic, You're not. nothing is wrong, we just have to select what body we want to use. So I need you to turn your attention to the outliner box which is over here on the far right hand side of your screen and you'll see a bunch of eyes and well listing these listings here are what type of body that you can work with inside this kit now the kit comes with two bodies included um, the curvy body and the fine body or I think it was classic in in world I'm not 100% sure I just opened up the cla the curvy box because it was the first one <laughs> alright so um, the fine and the classic are here you just have to click the eye and select which one that you want now unlike other dev kit where kits where you would select what feet you want for the kit uh, for your model this kit comes with the feet already attached so if you want curvy with high feet you would select curvy high feet and you see down here um, your avatar's foot um, is in high if you want flat feet it'd be flat same thing with the fine one now the process for making clothes is identical for both type body types however both bodies have different weights on it so you can't make a garment uh, for the fine and like you know use make a garment for the fine body and then copy the weights for it you'll have to make adjustments for the curvy body because the curvy body has I guess I want to say more boob jiggle <laughs> uh, than uh, the fine one so you'll have to go over those two when you're considering what clothes you're working on or your weight painting all right so um, let's dive in and I'll show you what to do and um, how to weight paint and rig to this body so first thing we want to do is bring in our garment that we want to attach to the skeleton. Well, first thing we need to do is select which skeleton we're going to be working with. And since I already have the curvy one on in world, I'm just going to click the eye that says curvy flat. And um, we're going to work with this one. Also, that's the one that I used and <laughs> made the clothes with. So um, once we have our body selected, I'm just going to scoot, click and scoot our UV window over because I don't really need it right now. I just want to have a good view of the 3D window. And we're going to go down to the bottom of our screen and select the new layer to bring our clothes in. Now, I like putting clothes on different layers because it makes it easier to select without selecting everything. There are some times when you're baking and you, your texture and you find that you get uh, black marks on there from the body clipping in some parts that you don't want or whatever. And it's easier to have them on their own la empty layer and get a really clean bake. Plus, it just looks a lot neater to have things on separate layers and everything crammed together onto one. Alright, so I'm going to import our clothes in and I'm going to select it by going to file import wavefront obj and um, I'm gonna figure out where my project folder was for this tonic and why <laughs> so I here I have my pants and a t-shirt and I'm going to put them on our avatar so um, we're gonna hold down turn on the screencast there we go Alright, so I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select the first layer with the body and I'm also going to select the one below it and that activates the bone layer. So I'm going to press A and deselect everything and now it's time to, now it's ready to be attached to the skeleton. So to attach it to the skeleton, you just need to do it in a certain order because if you do it in a wrong order, it won't attach. 
So what you need to do first is hold down shift, then right click on your garment, then select your bones. So garment first, then bones. When you do it right, it'll be highlighted like this. Then you're going to press control P and then do it with automatic weights. Okay, now the garment is attached to the skeleton. You have rig just rigged your first garment. Congratulations. That's it for the tutorial. <laughs> okay, no, 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 I wish. Even though it's rigged, we have to correct the weights on this. So what I want to do is select the bones, the skeleton, and I want to change it from object mode to pose mode. Then we're just going to select the arm bone and see how the weights look. So select the bone and then press R and rotate it. Uh, that's not that great. And um, we're going to see if we can fix this up a little bit. So what I need you to do next is to select our garment. No, no, no. I'm going to press A. Deselect everything. Then you're going to select your garment. I mean the garment. The body. Select the body first. Hold down shift. Then select the garment. And go into weight paint mode. If you did this right, you'll see that your garment changes colors. And your garment would be blue. Um... If your body changes blue, then you did it in the wrong order. You always select body first, then the garment. And then once everything is selected, we're just going to scroll on down to where, um, in a tool panel on weight paint mode, to where it says weight tra transfer weights, and we're going to press that button. And then we're going to do nearest face all, nearest face all. Hmm. And now you see that up here moves a little bit better. Um, shirt could use some work and definitely those pants okay so this is a great time to show you guys how to weight paint and at least give you the core concept of weight painting because no matter what automatic you do even data transfer fails a little bit sometimes you'll still have to do some manual weight painting and cleaning up with your stuff to make it look the way you want to so my method of weight painting is to, well, first got to explain to you how weight painting works. Uh, with Blender, uh, weight painting is how you tell Blender how you want your garment to work. And Blender displays that um, in the form of colors from red, yellow, green, light blue, and then blue. These are really like indicators of bone heat. Now, um... Just think of it as an infrared camera. The redder something is, the hotter it is, and the bluer it is, the colder it is. Red represents one, which is like the most control, and blue represents zero, which is absolutely no control over it. So basically, the hotter you make a bone, uh, you paint a bone, the more control that bone has over your garment. So you see how it's really red right here? Uh, actually, I can give you an example. Look how I paint this all. Uh, Oh, yeah, if you're having problems with your weight painting, make sure you check this little box at the bottom. That could be a pain in the butt. So now we can paint. <laughs> okay, so see how when we put our mouse over it and we paint this red? And if we remove it, you see it has all this control because there's a lot of heat coming from this bone and it's spreading all over the garment. Now, if we turn it down to zero and that's cold and we roll it across it, you see that the leg is losing control because it's cold. I mean, it's still going to move a bit because there's still weights inside of that thing. But once you remove the weights, the heat from it, you'll see that it lost control and the garment doesn't move. So basically when you're weight painting, all you're doing is um, trying to strike the right temperature of your garment until it looks right. So let me show you an example of that again. So we're going to correct these pants. As you see, when the leg moves, it moves a little awkward. And it's not supposed to do that. It's only doing that because there's a lot of heat on the leg and it's not, it needs to be corrected. So the way to fix this is to remove some of the heat this leg has over the pants until it looks right. So to do this, we're going to click on the bone and I'm going to press R and I'm going to rotate it outward so that it's pointing out away from the body. Now we want this to move in to the body so that it doesn't move. So we're going to turn our weight from 1 down to 0 and I'm going to increase the radius a bit so we get a bigger circle to work with. And then we're just going to cool it off and remove some of the weight. Now you don't have to just do broad strokes across it. You can, you know, pet pet at it and get little bit of clicks until it looks right. So now, when we move our leg about, you see 
it doesn't go crazy. Now the same thing with the crotch area. We're going to put it at an angle where it's kind of wrong. And I like to just cool it off here. So I'll cool off that crotch. <laughs> and you see the pants are behaving a lot better. Get it go. And then you want to do the same thing for the other side. Pull it, push it out. Cool it off. Pet, 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 pet. Till it looks right. And um, let's see, zoom in and cool this off like so. Alright, get in there. Move this off. Cool it off. There we go. Nice and pretty. So now you see. Well, let me scroll out so you can see. So now you see that when we move our leg, the pants move a lot better. Now again, you don't really have to worry too much about clipping things. If you're, you're making like pants, uh, a good 90 some odd percent of the time, your client is going to use the outfit anyway. But you do want to try to make it as pretty as you can um, without it being too much of a nuisance. Like this, we can just cool this off a bit. And then do the same thing here. If there's any error, there is not. Uh, bend the leg. Cool it down. Let's see. Oops, a little too cool. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other leg. Test it. Alright. So we can just use alphas with that. Now for the shirt, uh whoops, sometimes when you're making your garment your nips poke through, no big deal. We just select it and we go to sculpt mode. Grab the inflate, puff, 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 and there you go. Nipples averted. <laughs> um, I like to smooth out these harsh ruffles. Make it a little smoother there. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. See how the shirt bends. It's clipping a bit for my taste. So I'm going to fix it some more. Um. If you find that holding it together, having the garment together is a problem, you can always uh, go into object mode, then go into edit mode, then press the L key, then the P key, and then separate it by selection. That way you can paint, weight paint the t-shirt without, um, you know, hurting your pants. So, uh, let's see, rotate it a bit. Although all of this is technically within the alpha zone, so it doesn't really need to be. It's more or less a, a personal issue, like artistic, what you call it, input. Uh, all right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, good enough there. And arms, are those looking... Pretty good. Actually, it's a little bed right there. So let's cool this off. Just from that's basically what we're doing. We're just going through, cooling it off, removing some weight from arms and trouble areas until it looks good. All right. So we got it all down. And um, I like because this is a bento rig. You can, oh wait, I meant to say that in the beginning. Because this is a bento rig, um, we can actually just keep using Avastar 1 with it. You don't need Avastar 2 for this. You can use the old uh, Blender 7.2 and Avastar 1.71, which is what I'm using, uh, to rig and export this. So don't worry about it if you don't have Avastar 2. Mm. Okay, so what I like to do next is I like to clean it up by using my Remove Unused Vertex Group scripts just to make sure that we don't get no interference so remove unused vertex group and it takes out all the extra stuff that may be in there just cleans it up a little bit and then remove those two make it nice and light all right so now that we have it done it's time for us to export so select the top and your pants and then you go to file export colada avastar um, you don't have to check anything inside the advanced tab so it should just look like this um, once it's here I'm just gonna put this on my desktop real quick we're gonna hit import all right, uh, export, <laughs> and I'm going to take off this one, detach those clothes, all 
in a minute now. There we go. Turn my low and lowest to zero. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you why I do that. Okay, so if we don't, it'll cost more. So um, we'll just select it, right? And we go to weight skin weight because y'all check the skin weight box that sells it that this is a rigged item. If you don't check that box, then Second Life will render it as a static mesh, and we don't want that. We want rigged mesh. So click skin weight. So let's go back to the level of detail. Clothes don't need physics, so just remove it. Uh, just ignore that. So um, we want to go here to the first pan. I'm gonna hit calculate weights and face. Calculate. Blah, blah. Calculate weights and. Now you see it's going to cost us 36L and it'll be 24 um, land impact. Which is wrong. So what we want to do is turn low and lowest to zero. And we leave high and medium alone. Hit calculate weights and fees and there you go. See down the upload fee is 12 and the land impact is 1. So upload that stuff, bro. Alright, there we go. And then we put it on, add it to you. And there you have it. You have some clothes. Now there is a bit of clipping here, uh, but that clipping is well within the alpha alpha range, so we don't have to worry about it. If it bothers you, just turn on your thing and then hide your tushy. <laughs> and then you see uh, there's no clipping. Oh wait, is it uh, legs? Hot legs. All right, there we go. So yeah, now I don't have any issues with clipping sorry I'm laggy because I got blender and all this stuff going on so after that that's it really um all that's left is for you to texture your shirt and texture your pants and like I said you can just go onto any of my tutorials on texturing and stuff like that just hop on somebody else's class and go to the part where it says 3d painting and <laughs> my AO baking and the process is exactly the same just you gotta different body same process all right so I really need to go and I'm sorry that um, this wasn't a full-on multi-part class but this is really what people want it was just how to rig to it and with the dev kit hope this helps you out and hopefully if you know things change I'll be able to come back to this topic and make something for uh, a full class for this body but right now I have to get so good luck on your projects and I hope this helped you rig stuff for the tonic body See you guys later. Bye.